Hey everyone and welcome back. So in this video we're going to look at how to customize the choices menu. I'll get a quick example here. As you can see for when I run it, as you can see there's some weird and wonderful things have happened here. The menu is on the left hand side, the buttons are smaller, the font is different and so on and so forth. So we're going to look at how to make those kind of changes for now. So if you come into your screens.rpy file and you scroll down, you'll see a section that says screen choice brackets items. What this means is that this screen has a list of items passed into it. The items in this case being our menu choices and their subsequent outcomes. We've got a style prefix at the top, which we're saying choice. So what it's saying to RenPy is that any style with choice at the beginning of it is relevant to this screen. Then the screen itself is really simple. It's just a V box, a vertical box. What that means is that the items within the box are stacked vertically. And we go through a loop for all of the items in the items list, create a text button. The text displayed will be the caption. The action will be the action assigned to that button. Now you don't really need to worry about that for now. All you need to really worry about is the fact that it's just a VBOX with a list of buttons in it. Now we come down to some variables. We can see the choice VBOX is a VBOX. Fantastic. And then we've assigned some properties to it. Now, as you can see, I've already changed the X align. It should be 0 0.5, but I've changed it to 0, 0.0 to move it onto the left. So if you wanted to change the position of this, you could simply just change this variable. For example, if I wanted to put it on the right hand side of the screen, I'd change that to X align 1. And it will now be over here on the right hand side of the screen. Fantastic. Or alternatively, we could just comment that out and we could change it to x pause and we could put it at a specific set of coordinates so let's say we want to put it on 600 pixels across the screen and when we run it again we will see that it is now at 600 pixels across the screen as well as the y coordinates which have already been provided by renpy's defaults which is y pause 405 but i'm going to just leave that with X align 0, 0.0 because it's okay on the left hand side and then the Y anchor what we're saying is that it's in the middle basically the uh, the items within it are in the middle is what I should say now we've got a spacing here GUI choice spacing um, which is part of the definition for the choice V box but this variable is obviously defined within the GUI.rpy file so we'll go to GUI.rpy and here we are, choice button, but it's not here. So we need to go and find this variable. So we're looking for GUI G, well, what was a, what was the variable called again? I've forgotten already. We'll come back to screens to RPY. GUI choice spacing. So we come back to GUI. So we're looking for choice spacing around here somewhere. Or we could alternatively just put choice spacing into our search box and there we go boom found it as you can see i've changed it it's set to eight pixels before it was set to something wacky like 50 so you can change that if you wanted to you could set it to zero we'll save that and we'll see what happens when we have that set to zero as you can see there's no space between our buttons except for the very slight border that is in the PNG file so it, the actual PNG file that is defined as the backdrop for this button which we can easily find if we go to our RenPy launcher open directory we click on GUI and we can click on buttons and as you can see choice hover background choice idle background and if we open that file up there you go you can see there's a very slight border on the top and bottom around the sides of the button and you could change this for whatever you want this png file it's easily editable no problem at all so don't feel like it has to be this you could change it for a solid color background or anything weird and wonderful that you decide you want this background to be so we'll close that down again for now and we're going to change this back to eight pixels just for the sake of having a bit of a gap between them we'll save it and we'll run it just to make sure that we've got that there we go. 
you can see the gaps increased. So we'll come down. Now we're going to come back down to our GUI choices menu definitions, which is further up. Choice buttons. So as you can see, I've changed the width. It used to be something wacky like over a thousand. I've made them narrower. And I've also, uh, the, the, the height, sorry, will be none by default. That's fine. It just means that it will scale to fit the text that's within it. The choice button title you don't need. Now the borders are what I've also reduced. If you look at the default values, they're something like 150 by 20 or something like that. Um, so I've changed it to 58, 58. So we've got 50 pixels on the left, eight pixels on the top, 50 pixels on the right, eight pixels on the bottom. And we could change that if we wanted to. We could say, let's make that 25. And then when we run, you can see that the border on the left, the gap inside the button on the left is smaller. So it does that. So that changes the position of the text or that rather the border around the text in which the button will fit. So we close that again. I'm going to pop that back onto 50 for the time being. And now what you can see here is that these in your unedited files are defined variables. And all I've done is I've replaced them with strings. And I've created a folder. Inside the GUI folder, I've created a folder called font. And I've added my own font in there. In this case, I've chosen Helvetica Neue Light. And it's a true type font. And then all I've done is I've put that in there. GUI fonts HNL dot TTF and it's loading that as my choice buttons text and then this in your default file is also a variable but that variable is set to 33 so all I've done is I've changed it to 26 to make the text appear a little bit smaller. So the choice button text align in your default file will be 0 0.5 and I've changed that to 0, 0.0 to make the text justify to the left side of the button rather than the middle. Next, you have two variables. You have the idle color, which is the color that the text on the button is when you're not hovering over it. In this case, it's set to just slightly off white. And then in the text hover color, it's set to FFF. Now we can change that if we wanted to. We could have it set so that it's slightly pink. Um, so let's change that to FFCCCC. And now when we run it, as you can see, I mean, it's a tiny, tiny, tiny color shift, but it is slightly pink, but it goes white when you hover over it like so. And that's because our hover color is set to pure white. So let's make this slightly more noticeable pink and we'll change that to like so. And it should be slightly more noticeably pink now if we go back. And we run our file as you can see now clearly pink and then white when we hover over it and then the button as you can see uses those two backgrounds so we've got black when we're not hovering over it and then this orange when we are hovering over it like so so these are the two files that you would want to edit if you wanted to change the backgrounds to the to the buttons so there you go and that really is all there is to it, editing the GUI uh, choices menu, simply just by making those slight changes there. So I hope you found that useful, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. See you soon. Bye-bye.